This video is finally explaining all of my OCs that I've ever mentioned on this channel. I didn't know whether to just upload mountains of text or explain it in picture form, so we've got a split, I'm gonna say. Not too much text, don't worry, there's not too much to read. So to start off, there are two universes that my OCs belong to, so they don't cross over much. They're both about witches, but they're different, <laughs> different universe. So we have the Witching Hour universe and we have the Blood War universe. Uh, the Witching Hour is more modern magic, I guess, you know, they have phones, they have phones, phones exist. That's as best as I can describe it. Um, and in the Blood War universe, it's all swords, magic, and the ye old world, I guess. Um, it's more swords, no technology, you know, that kind of Game of Thrones era? Is it an era? I didn't do well in history. To start off, I'm going to start with this folder. <laughs> the Witching Hour slash Grievances with the Witching Hour folder. Um, and depending on how long that takes me, this will either be a two-part video or I'll just I'll just upload it. Cause... So me of the future, t say now, is it all in one video? Yeah? No? Circle yes or no? Okay, intro done. Let's get on with the rest of the video. Starting off, we have Neptune. She's the main character in the Witching Hour story. They're all witches, but she's having visions connected to the demons that lurk in the forest in the middle of their school. She goes to investigate. She meets Tim. Well, creature. She calls him Tim. That's why he's called Tim. You can't be scared of a Tim, so that's why she does that. Ignore how she has blood on her. She tries to solve all these problems that are happening to the school, but completely overlooks the problems that are happening to, you know, her, her best friend, and it goes downhill from there. She's one of my favorites. She's lovely. She's bubbly. She's just so innocent, kind-hearted, but she makes so many mistakes. But who doesn't? Her main priority at the end of the day is her friends and trying to save them from maybe parts of self-destruction. She loves Jupiter as a platonic soulmate, which I feel is just as important as romantic, but Jupiter wants more, Neptune can't give her that, uh, and apparently that's not good enough for Jupiter, so she goes off and almost destroys the world because who wouldn't <laughs> when that happens to them also venus doesn't help when um jupiter doesn't understand why neptune can love someone like venus and not her but that's just the way it goes sometimes so okay that's the lowdown on neptune i feel like i need to do jupiter justice in this because there's more to her than just being infatuated with Neptune. Um, there's other sad things going on with her. Some of you might know her from the first animatic I ever did when she loved me. Is that what it's called? I think so. In that it shows, I don't know if it's clear, but her mother has left. She left her when she was a child without really explaining why. She's not dead. I. I failed to mention that before, but... And her relationship with her dad after that was a bit rocky because they both sort of... They don't verbally say that they're blaming each other, but they blame each other. <laughs> and then she's been in one of my recent animatics that looks more recognisably her, waiting in the wings. To explain it, she's just come back to her room to find it empty because Saturn has been taken off by this character called the Governess, which was in, I had a small comic that I'm hiding from the world. 
yeah, the governess has taken Saturn off to practice extra lessons while sort of downgrading Jupiter. Downgrading? I'm sticking with that word. And Neptune is busy talking to Venus and nothing else. And she's still harbouring, waiting for her mum to come back. Wondering if it was because she disappointed her mum, maybe that's why she left, she wasn't good enough. And that's basically her fundamental like character. She's She feels she's not good enough for anyone and she thinks she has substantial evidence from all the things that have happened. She feels she's not good enough without people liking her. Um, but then, so when she finds that they're slipping away from her, she does the only thing she thinks to do when she's approached by a demon who shall not be named. Maybe I've already mentioned it, I can't remember. She's approached by a demon and she takes the offer willingly. There's no... she's not tricked into it. She's like, oh, I know this will hurt people, but, you know, I'm hurting. Why can't other people hurt? So... that's her. <laughs> now we have Saturn, who is the best boy ever. He's one of the original three friends, so Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, all of them. They're like a three friend type friend group. His parents were killed. <laughs> Don't worry, some of my other characters, their their parents are happy and alive and okay and they have a good relationship. But for now, Saturn's parents are dead, sadly, were killed when he was but a baby. He was raised in a foster care situation um, and eventually meets Jupiter and Jupiter sort of adopts him as, like, sibling. <laughs> and they grow up together now and Jupiter's dad is sort of just there like, right, I have two kids now, great. <laughs> Love that for him. In my original comic, Saturn was taken aside by the governess character and trained in these dark magic types and that is how he got his scar through misuse of magic. But yeah, he will tell you different. But now since the comic's sort of been scrapped, I can, I can change that. <laughs> Saturn is so caring even though he's going through so much bad stuff. I don't know. Can I say bad words? I probably can't. I will restrict my language. Even though he's going through times with the demons in the forest as well, unhealthily is not telling anyone about it because no one knows how to talk about their feelings in this story. But he's like, hey, my girl Jupiter, she's going through some stuff. Um, I'm going to be there for her and not listen to the voices in my head because why would I? He's a character close to my heart and I want nothing but the best for him, but being a creator, I know I might mess that up. Um, so hopefully they, they all get a good ending, don't worry. No one dies, she said convincingly. Okay. <laughs> and if anyone died, it wouldn't be Saturn. Don't worry about that. Last of the humanish characters we have, my beloved Venus. Some of you may know I'm obsessed with her, and I think some of you are also obsessed with her, and I appreciate that because she is someone you need to be obsessed with. Listen, okay? Let's talk about it. So Venus is a half witch, half demon, demon hunter. She's a demon on her mother's side. We're not sure who her demon mother is convincingly said. She has adopted parents who are both witches and she's been tasked with finding out who's causing demonic havoc at this school because um, the demon readings are off the chart or something. I don't know how demon hunting works. I'm not a demon hunter. So she goes to investigate, posing as like a witch student, even though she's like not supposed to be. She's part demon. And she finds after investigating and getting close to Neptune, that it's Neptune that's sort of her target. So what are you gonna do there? At one point, she like, instead of, you know, I love the trope of I'm supposed to kill you, but actually I'll die for you sort of thing. Not suggesting anything, 
But if she were in a situation where Neptune needed saving, that would happen, okay? She, on the outside, you know, she looks like she could kill you, but she's actually a cinnamon roll, but also she would kill you if you threatened Neptune, so don't be doing that. She will murder you. Look at, she's murderous. <laughs> I love her because she was just so sort of supposed to be there to like investigate this demon business and then she like falls for Neptune and is hell bent on antagonizing Jupiter because there's just a rift between them and I there's kind of you know tension there as well but we don't talk about that because that's the dark side of this and yeah she has two names Venus Demeth because the witches they only have one first name and their names sort of link them to people whose sort of paths are linked with theirs so like destiny all that fate we love that names names in the universe are really important and jupiter venus saturn neptune aren't their real names i can't tell you what their real names are half because i don't know but also because in this story names are really important and once you tell someone your name you know that's bad news. They have it's all about trust and don't don't be telling um, you know demons your names because they'll come for you and they'll ruin your life and they'll make your life miserable. So don't do that. And finally, we have these two, the best two. <laughs> this is creature and this is thing, also known as Tim and Thing. Thing never gets a different name. Thing is Thing. They. Got their names creature and thing from you know people who lurk in the woods and they overhear them talking about how there's a creature out there and that they saw a thing and they're like wow they those are really good names basically they are demons or forest god like creatures thing would probably see her see herself more as a god than tim does tim's just sort of vibing in this forest they sort of, they have been causing a bit of chaos and a bit of havoc together, but Tim makes a friend. He finds Neptune in the woods and Neptune's like, wow, a demon. And Tim is like, wow, a friend. So Thing's not too happy though, because Thing doesn't like humans. They are beneath her and should be beneath Tim too, but no, Tim doesn't see it that way. Yeah, Thing, she's a bit unhinged. She is lacking empathy for the poor deers that lurk in the forest. I'm sorry, but that, that deer probably isn't alive. He's probably unalive. To be fair, her only fascination, like, in other creatures is with deer. Unfortunately, she just likes them a bit too much and gets overly petitive. Is that a word? So Neptune finds Tim... Tim is offering to show her. He's like, hey, do you want to learn a bit of demon magic? And she's like, oh, okay, let's be careful with that. Thing eventually goes to Jupiter seeking sort of a portal into the mortal world. And Jupiter is surprisingly okay with that. And Thing sort of ruins everything. And poor Tim has to clean up the mess. And he just wants a friend at the end of the day. And Thing doesn't even care for that. So that basically summarises them. Also, they are massive. They are taller than the trees and normally they are sat down in the woods somewhere, but they are, you know, they're huge. So there we have it. That is, I hope, the entirety of the witching hour explained. Hopefully this helps and doesn't make everything worse, but I try my best, so... Thank you if you made it this far, it means a lot that people are interested in these characters, but oh my gods and everything, that this, my voice is killing me. Um, this is probably why, well, yeah, I don't do many, I haven't done a voiceover before, so that people know of. So I'm gonna go rest my voice, do, I don't know, sit in a dark room I guess, and yeah, so I'll see you all voice again in the blood war part of this video which will be up soon but i want to get i have an animation i want to get out for spooky season before that so you can have a break from me
And yeah, I'll see you all then. Bye!